Okay, let's get started creating your very first database. In this video, we're going to create this employees table. This is going to be the foundation of our entire database. All of our queries and forms and reports are going to relate back to this table. And I highly recommend from this point forward in the course that you follow along with me in Access step by step and actually do these steps because that's really how you're going to learn how to create an Access database. So what I want you to do is open Access and in this case I have it open already so I'm just going to go to the File, New, and in the New screen we're going to choose Blank Database and we're going to name it we're just going to call this employee contacts. It shows me where it's going to put it, but if you want to put it in a specific location, you can click here and browse to that location and find it on your computer. But this is going to my documents, which is where I want it to go. And then I'll click create. And now we have a new blank database and you'll notice all of these table objects are empty over here except for the placeholder table here. I'm going to actually close that out so we can create this completely from scratch. So to create a table, your first table, you're going to go in and click the create tab and then you'll see here we have the options of tables, queries, forms, reports, macros, and code. So we're going to go to the tables section and we're just going to click on table. This allows us to create a new blank table. And you'll see it looks basically just like the one that we had before. So this is the data sheet view. What we want to do is go into the design view and to go to design view you can either click on this icon up here or you can click the drop down and you'll see it's selected on data sheet view. We can click design view there or you can also right click on the header there and click design view. Immediately it's going to ask us to name the table and we're calling this table employees. Then we click OK and you can see it's now saved it as table employees. Now a note on naming conventions. The reason I'm putting the table TBL employees there is actually kind of an old-fashioned naming convention in previous versions of Access, it didn't do a very good job of sorting your objects between tables and queries and reports. So people got in the habit of naming them with the type of object that it had at the beginning. Access is better at sorting these out, so you really don't need to do that. But I'm showing you that because you'll probably see that out there, and that way you know what you're seeing. If you wanted to though, it would be okay to just name this employees. But there are a couple of guidelines when it comes to naming objects in Access that I do want you to be aware of. So let's go into this. Actually, let's close out of this and I'm gonna go into the rename here because you can rename your objects. So the basic guidelines of naming a table is that you don't want spaces or strange characters, okay? So we wouldn't wanna say employees exclamation point exclamation point or we wouldn't want to say employee list with a space in it like that. The reason for that is that if you create a big database and then someone else comes in later to do programming, then when they go to write code, this little space here is going to cause them problems and they're going to have to do certain things in their programming that's gonna be time consuming for them and a headache to accommodate for that little space in there and it's just unnecessary. So the way to do this is if we wanted to call it employee list, then we'd take that space out, but we would capitalize the words to make it easier to read. If we spelled it employee list with just an, a lowercase l, it's harder to differentiate and it just makes it a little less friendly. So by capitalizing that l, it's still easy to read, but it won't cause a programmer problems down the road. So anyway, we are calling this just employees. It's also good to be consistent with your use of plurals or singular. So if I'm going to use employee here, then I would want to use that throughout the rest of my objects for consistency. Or if I'm going to use employees, again, I'd want to use that throughout the rest of my objects. 
So I'm going to hit enter and save that. And now we can open up our table. And we'll go back to design view and we'll get started creating it. And what we're doing here in the design view is we're going to put in the fields that we want in our table. And if you recall in our datasheet view, these are the fields that are going to go across the top of the column. So these are going to be your headers. And if you recall for our employee contact list, we want an employee ID. We want the employee's first name, their last name, and their phone number, and then the office ID, which we're going to pull from another table. So we're going to go put the office ID in later. But for now, we can go to our design view to put in these different fields and assign some properties to the data that's allowed. So we'll go to the design view. So our first field name is going to be employee ID. And when we have it selected on there, I can just type right over it. Or you can always, if you're clicked out of a cell, you can always click back into the cell to type in it, or you can highlight the field to type over it. Very similar to the way that Excel works. So we have our field now, and you'll notice there's this little key over to the side here. And then you'll see up here as well, primary key is highlighted. Now a primary key will become very important when it comes to more complex databases, where you have several tables here, that are going to relate to each other. And this field is going to be a unique identifier for each individual employee that we can then use to connect it to other tables. So just know that this primary key allows us to create a unique identifier for each of the records within this table. And we can turn this off if we want by selecting that and clicking primary key and you'll see that it's now gone. We'll go ahead and leave it on so that we have an employee ID number for each employee. And then it automatically created the data type of auto number. The data type is essentially the type of data that can go into the employee ID field. So this is going to be auto number. And this is a really cool thing that Access does where each time we enter a new record, so a new name, Bob, Sarah, Candace, etc., it's going to assign them a unique number. So Bob would be number one, Sarah would be number two, Candace would be number three, and so on. And that's a really powerful way to prevent data entry errors. So if we have two Bob Smiths, and one lives in Seattle, and one lives in Portland, then the first Bob Smith that we put in is going to be employee number one. And the second Bob Smith that we put in is it going to be employee number two. And that's going to be really significant later when you're doing different calculations and doing reports based on employee data because that's the number that is going to be used to differentiate between Bob Smith number one from Portland and Bob Smith number two from Seattle. So we'll leave that as auto number and then we'll put in our second field and that's going to be our first name, our employee's first name. And notice how I'm using the same naming conventions that I used in the table name. So I'm leaving no blanks and I'm not putting any strange characters in there. Then to go to the next cell, you just click tab or enter. And now it's saying short text because Access is smart and it recognizes that this is probably a text field. And you can see we have all kinds of choices. Long text is for huge entries. Short text is up to 255 characters. You can do numbers. You can use numbers if you're going to make calculations on something. And one thing that people might be inclined to do is put, for instance, a phone number in as a number. But you'll notice you don't do calculations on a phone number. You're never going to add two phone numbers together or take the average of two phone numbers. So actually phone numbers you'll enter as short text. But if you're doing calculations, like something you would do in Excel, then you can enter it as number. Date and time is pretty straightforward. Currency is if you're using money. Auto number we've used above here to create a unique identifier for each record. So that's very useful. Yes and no is just like it sounds. It basically gives you a checkbox. You can click yes or no in answer to, for instance, if your this field name says on email list, then when you're entering data, you can select yes, you want them on the email list or no, they don't want to be on the email list. 
And then, and, and to be honest, most of these you don't end up using. The majority of the time you use short text. Every once in a while you use date and time or number or auto number or yes and no. You can do a hyperlink on occasion if you want to list like a website. And then I'll show you actually how to use the lookup wizard, which allows you to pull data from another table, which is pretty cool. So we'll get into that, but for the most part, you're going to be using short text. So you click enter again. You can put in a description, and this will help people to enter data into your table. First name is pretty straightforward, right? We click enter again. That takes us to our next field name, and this is going to be last name. And that's also going to be short text. And then our phone number. And we're going to be more specific and say home phone so that we know it's the employee's phone number. And again, I'm calling this short text because we're not doing any mathematical calculations on the home phone number. We're going to basically treat it just like text. Okay, so now we have our fields entered and we're going to switch to data sheet view and it's going to ask us to save our table. And we're going to say yes. And now we have our table essentially ready for data. So we have our employee ID, we have our first name, we have our last name, we have our home phone number and we could start to put people in here. And we'll go ahead and do that. Now, once you've created a database and you've created forms for data entry, you're not gonna be entering data in directly into the table. Unless there's some really compelling reason to do so, that's not a great practice because your forms will be controlling the way your data is entered, which will help to prevent errors. So let's just put in our first employee I'm going to hit the tab button because it's going to auto number this. And as soon as I start typing, Bob, notice it added a employee ID number here automatically. And he's number one. So we'll keep typing his information in. Bob Blake. And I'm just putting a fictitious phone number in here. Okay. And then we can hit enter. And we're on to the second record. And I'll hit tab to get to the first name field. And I've got Stan Ford. And notice again, it populated his employee ID number in a sequence. So he's number two. That's his unique employee ID number. I'll put in his phone number and enter. And that record is now officially in our database as well. So while we're here creating our first table, let me give you a couple more little navigational tips here. If you are entering data here, which we'll do a little bit of just so you can build a database and get familiar with it before we have any forms created, to navigate through these records, you have a navigation bar down here. So this will take you to the first record. See how it highlights us on employee ID number one? And this will take you to the last record. So that takes us to Stan, employee number two. And the middle buttons here will just take you to the previous or next. So I can go from Bob to Stan, etc. And if I click it one more time, it'll take me down to a new record. But let's say we're at the beginning and I want to, and say I have a thousand people in here and I want to get all the way to the bottom and create a new record. But it's pages and pages down. Then I can just go to this button here and click new blank record and it's going to drop me to the very bottom. Okay. And then you can also do a search for a record or a name, any field in here basically. Okay. So that's just a quick navigation to get around your tables. You can also use the arrows to navigate. You can obviously use your mouse to click into whatever cell you're interested in using. You can use the page up and page down. And if you're in the beginning, you can click tab or enter, and that will take you to the next cell. And one other thing you can do is you can resize these field headings just by moving them over like that. And let's go ahead and close out of this. You can click on the X here, or you can right click on the table and click close. And you'll notice since I made some changes to the layout, it's going to ask me to save it, and I'm going to say yes. Okay, so now we have our employees table over here in our access objects. Let's go create our office table 
with a list of offices where these employees work. So we're going to go to the Create tab, click Table, and we're going to go into our Design view. And again, we can click here, use the drop-down, or we can right-click here, or you can even go down into the corner here and click Design View. And when we go into Design View, it's going to ask us to name our table. One thing you'll notice that's different between Access and Excel is that when you create tables in Access, you name them and save them first. Then whenever you put in a record, so when we put in Bob Blake and his phone number, when we clicked off of that row, that record, onto the next record, it automatically inputs his information into the table and saves it. Okay, so let's go ahead and name this. We're going to call it Offices. Oops, I'm going to put Table Offices. Again, so we know it's a table. Click OK, and it's created our table. Okay, again, it's automatically offering us a primary key, which is fine. We want a primary key. Then I can just start typing in my field name, and we're going to go with Office ID. It's already an auto number, which is what we want, because this is going to be our primary key. So it's going to create a unique number for each office that we put in. So every office in our region is going to have its own office number. We're going to click Tab, Tab again, and we're going to do the office city, the office state, and the office phone number. So first we put in city and tab, short text is good, state, tab, short text is good, and phone. And short text again is fine for phone numbers because we're not doing any mathematical calculations. So we're finished with that. Now when we click to the data sheet view, it's going to ask us to save it. Yes, we'll save it. And now we have our table. So you see again, it's got our office ID, our city, state, and phone number. So let's put in our first office. We'll hit tab and Boise, and notice again when I start typing Boise, it puts in an auto number for the ID, so it's number one. State is Idaho. Put in a phone number. And click Enter, and that record is now in our table. Okay, so now we have our two main tables that our entire database is going to be built on. Coming up, we'll learn how to enter more data in here. So we can populate this table with all of our offices, and so we can populate this table with all of our employees.